my new series of recordings called What's Normal. These look at what we expect in physical and emotional development for children between the ages of 2 and 11. For those of you who have not come across us before, I'm Sam. I'm the clinical director here at Standing in the Gap. Standing in the Gap is a small charity which started in 2017. We're what's called an early intervention mental health charity. This means we work with children and families before they hit crisis and while they are having wobbles and concerns. Our vision is that every child is emotionally healthy and able to flourish. We support preschool and primary age children and help them manage the big emotions such as fear, anxiety, anger and grief. Our mission is to build emotional well-being in children by providing tools and support to children and families. We're a small charity based in Oxfordshire and have been fortunate to get a grant from the Coronavirus Support Fund, which is distributed by the National Lottery to enable us to make this resource. However, if you found it, this series useful, please do make us a donation to enable us to continue to make these resources. You can do this via our website using the donation button or text SITG and the amount to 7085. If you'd like to support us regularly, please look at our supporters page on the website for full details. Your support can really help make a difference to children and families. Prior to starting Standing in the Gap, I carried out some research in three schools in Banbury in Oxfordshire. This looked at parents' and teachers' views on support for children with mental health distress or difficulties. One of the really clear themes that came out from this research was that parents told us that they didn't really know what normal was. So they weren't sure if it was a problem, or what was a phase, or what was normal for that age. They also told us they wanted to know what were classed as the red flags or concerns, things that they shouldn't ignore, and when they should ask for help. Finally, they told us they didn't know where to go for help, so wanted all this information. We wanted to respond to those concerns and have some generic advice about how children develop, what factors influence all children's development, and what behaviour is a concern or what we class as a red flag. We also wanted to give some real, cl really clear information on where to get help. Following on from this, we will look at the children from the ages of 2 to 11 individually and see what's going on, looking at their physical and emotional development and what is normal for that specific age. And at the end of each, I have a section on what can help and actually help their development. One of the things that parents often ask is, when should I ask for more help for my child? Um, I'd recommend if you see any of the following behaviours, you have a conversation with your child's school or your GP about getting your child assessed, as they will probably need some more support. If we pick things up early, they can be supported. Behavioural changes don't necessarily mean an underlying significant issue, but they're unlikely to go away on their own. So red flags or behaviours that are a cause for concern include a change in behaviour, a normal, health, happy child becomes withdrawn, quiet, tearful, or you see changes in sleeping habits. A regression in behaviour, so losing a skill that they've already achieved or mastered. This could be they started wetting the bed, or being wet during the day, they're not sleeping, or they're showing less self-care activities than they were before. In school-aged children, some of our concerns include appearing low or disinterested, a lack of interest in normal activities or withdrawing from activities they've previously enjoyed, can be a concern. Expressing negative views about themselves constantly. Not just the situational reaction of, oh, I'm such an idiot, I can't do your maths homework or don't understand things, but instead you're seeing regular negative views about themselves. Any expressions of not wanting to live or carry on living should be classed as a concern. A significant change in weight, either that's a gain or a loss, are a concern. Any obsessions around what they eat, where or how they need to keep clean Bringing in repetitive routines or very fixed routines can be a certain concern. Any self-destructive behaviours that aren't a one-off in temper, so things like headbanging, scratching themselves, pulling their hair or harming themselves physically can be a concern. Also, anything as parents that worries you, that you have, you, you're concerned about, that you need to have a conversation with a professional. So who do I go to for help? If your child is under five, you can contact your health visitor. If they're at primary school, contact your school health nurse. Both can help support you in your child's development. Here at Standing in the Gap, we're in the process of applying for grants to be able to support more families one-to-one. -one. So please do check out our website 
and see where we are at and what support we are able to offer. Please try not to Google concerns as child mental health issues are complex and need to be properly assessed and managed. Also, on the other extreme, don't ignore it. If you're seeing some of the concerns mentioned above, please do ask for help. The earlier you get the help, the better it is for you and your child. We all want children to be able to be emotionally healthy and able to flourish. So how do children develop? Just before we go into the age specific development, I want to look at a few key issues that impact all children. What we need to remember is children do develop at different rates to each other. So try not to compare. Not all three-year-olds or all eight-year-olds behave the same. Factors other than development have an impact, as we'll look at in a moment. However, all children do go through development stages and you learn the basic skills and then build on the more advanced skills. And generally, these skills develop in the same order as each skill builds on the next. So children develop primarily um, physically, emotionally and socially. Uh, a delay in one area can cause a delay in another area. So, for example, if there's a delay in language skills, this often impacts the behaviour as the child struggles to communicate and have the big feelings that they're having. The environment a children, child is in has a huge impact on them. Are they getting age-appropriate stimulation with toys, books, interaction with others? Are their basic needs being met? Do they feel safe and loved? Are there any concerns about physical or emotional neglect? Or any significant conflicts within the house that's going on? as all of these have an impact on the environment the child is in and also on the development. It's a little bit like growing a plant. If you give it enough light, water and the right soil, it flourishes. If you don't, the plant's growth is stunted. Children are the same. They need a good environment to be able to flourish physically and emotionally. Birth order also affects. Same as with environment, where the child fits within your family has an impact on their development. Are they the eldest and independent, wanting to be grown up? Or are they the youngest, the baby, the one who everybody helps and does things for? Often these family roles stick with us throughout life. Temperament also has an impact on how children respond and react to situations. If you've ever wondered why you can have two children that are so different, do watch our temperament video, available on the Understanding Your Child part of our website. And there's lots of tips there that can be really helpful in managing children slightly different due to their temperament traits. Another aspect is brain development. We know that by the age of three, your child's brain is 90% of its adult size. However, there's so much to learn and so much development. We know that brain development can take between 25 to 30 years to grow a fully functioning adult brain. We know our brains grow significantly at two specific times. First three years and again during the teenage years. And during these times, the brain soaks up lots of information and makes millions of new brain connections. To help your child make sense of the world, it's really important to talk to them. Explain to them what's happening, what you're doing, and also what you want them to do. Please do see our resources on managing change in the Understanding Your Child section of the website. It's got a whole useful bit of information on explaining things and how you walk children through different stages. Secondly, let them know that they are loved and safe. Thirdly, give them a framework to help them understand and process things. Neurobiologists and cognitive psychologists tell us that between 40 and 95% of what we do is habit. So it's worth building in good routines with your child. This can include anything from cleaning their teeth, sitting at the table to eat, or reading books together before they go to bed. By building in patterns, it helps children place activities when initially they can't tell the time. Really important to say that the information in these, in these videos is a guide. If you are concerned about your child's development, whether that's physical or emotion, it's really important you get somebody to review you in person. So in summary, for this first bit, what we've looked at is what behaviours are red flags and need further assessment and shouldn't be ignored. We've looked at where you can go and get help from. We've also looked at what factors affect all children's development. So we said that the building blocks, one part to another, a delay in one area impacts another area, environment has an impact, temperament has an impact, and brain development has an impact. We're now going to move on to look at the specific age and consider what's normal physical development, what's normal emotional development, and also what we can do to support development. 
three-year-olds. During the years of three to six, there is a big change in how your child views the world, and the aim is to help them become confident and capable of understanding the world around them. At this age, children often create imaginary friends who can get blamed for lots of things, but also used to explain things. I'm not scared of the dark, but Wonky, or whatever the imaginary friend is, is. Don't be concerned about this. Let them talk and play with these pretend people. They will grow out of it. Normal physical development for a three-year-old is they enjoy walking, climbing and running. They have a large vocabulary that is mainly understandable to strangers, however they may have some grammatical areas, errors, like me. They ask lots of why, what, where and who questions, which can be hard work at times, but worth persisting and answering the questions as they're sponges for information. They will eagerly listen to a story. They need approximately 12 hours of sleep in 24, and sometimes may need a nap or a big girl, boy or, boy or girl rest, to catch up and keep them going. Some may need more than 12 hours sleep. They should be able to use a fork and a spoon effectively. They can draw, thread objects, play and mould Play-Doh, and complete simple jigsaws. Your average three-year-old is starting to become more independent and will tell you, I can do it myself and they might not always hold your hand or stay by your side when you're out. Play-wise, they can start to play briefly with other children and are learning more about sharing and taking turns. Often they have a specific friend they like to play with and boys generally play with boys and girls with girls. When we look at three-year-olds emotional development, we find that they're often a little less rebellious than they were at two, having a little bit more self-control and are often a little less aggressive. Your three-year-old's attention span is increasing and they can often stay with an activity for at least five minutes. They might boss others around and make demands showing their independence, be more willing to do what you want if they think it's their idea. At this age, bargaining does work, you do this and I'll do that. They can understand this. They don't understand reasoning, so you need to do because is something that, they, that involves more brain power than they actually have. So don't waste your time on reasoning. But bargaining, I'll do this, you do that, works quite well. Distraction works well as part of behaviour management. Oh, what's this? What's that? Let's go and do something different. During the second part of the third year, some children get scared by moving things. They can get especially frightened by big objects coming towards them. This is worth considering when you're out and about, as often lots of things can seem really big to a three-year-old. Shopping trolleys, pushchairs, mobility scooters, dogs feel really big when you're only this high. If your child gets really scared of something, sometimes it's worth getting down to their level to see what it looks like from their view and then helping them deal with it, explaining what it is, why it was scary and what they can do. Three-year-olds are often, are often quite anxious about being left by their carer, particularly at night. So it's worth giving them lots of reassurance that you're not going anywhere, that you're about, and things are quite normal. So what things can help with three-year-olds' development? Talk about the number three. Read the three billy goats gruff, the three bind mats, the three little pigs, the three bears. Show your child how to count to three, using objects like balls, cutlery or fruit, and explain that they're three. Encourage them to count to three once they can, and then add on four, five and six if they're interested. Draw and cut out different feelings faces, and put them on lolly sticks, and get your child to act out different feelings with the puppets. When you're with your child, give them instructions with at least two parts. Put the plate on the table and pick up the blue spoon. You can make this into a silly game by asking them to do unleaved things. Touch your elbow and run round in a circle. Or find a book and put it on your head. It all helps with the processing and reasoning. Have a special reading time each day. Snuggle up and read stories together. The library can be a fantastic source of books. When reading familiar books, leave a word out and let your child fill in the blanks. 
play the more or less game. Who has more potatoes and who has less? You can do this around the table. Um, who has more beans? Less beans. Or you can do this with the same size cup, pouring water in, which has more or less. Encourage your child when they're getting dressed to do the buttons and the zips. Show them and encourage them on how to complete these. Listen and dance to the music together. This can be fast or slow, depending on the tempo. Do pause it and get your child to freeze until you start the music again. This also helps with their processing. Overall, enjoy your child as a three-year-old. Don't keep saying when you're bigger or when you can, because time goes really quickly. Do enjoy them as a three-year-old.